Good morning. Welcome to Unity Center, Walnut Creek. I'm Richard Flander, and I'm your platform assistant for this seat this, this morning. Well, and I welcome you to the service. We are blessed to have today a guest artist, Trevor Justice, <laughs> with Lisa, Megan, and Scott. Yay! Before we begin, let's take a deep breath. You know, just whatever's going on in the world, whatever worries there are, just, just take that deep breath and let it go into the ground. You know, just breathe it in and then let it flow out. As we begin our service, please remember to turn off all electronic devices, please. The affirmations we use throughout the service are in your bulletin. Now take another deep breath. Let us open our service by focusing our intention through our opening affirmation. I will say it once and then invite you to repeat it with me twice. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Together, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Please join me in reading aloud this, our statement of unity found in your bulletin. God's love is with each of us, guiding us to dynamically express our wholeness, wisdom, and abundance. We acknowledge the universal wisdom in the Christ teachings and in all the spiritual paths. I now choose to open to the presence of divine love and to be changed at death. Throughout this sacred time, God is uplifting me and through my heart, the world. John Eagleston in the brief uh, daily word. word for today is intention. Mother Teresa once said, uh, it is not the magnitude of our actions, but the amount of love that we put into them that matters. What a beautiful, beautiful illustration of the power of right intention and the blessing of acting in love. What is my intention today? What mark do I want to make in the world? I have a desire to be genuine with all whom I meet, and I have a desire to demonstrate my faith, my faith in God, and be a light in the world. As I share my light with others, I feel purposeful, and my life follows a divinely directed path, and I attract unlimited good, and I experience uh, relationships that are happy and fulfilling, and I am a channel of love and light. From the book of Isaiah, my purpose shall stand and I will fulfill my intention. Uh, the affirmation for today is, I fulfill my purpose as I share love with the world. Thank 
here at Heather Farms. Love and Action will celebrate an amazing accomplishments and look at empowering our future. If you'd like to consider joining us to make that possible or extending the blessing you already have given, the forms for that financial commitment are at the Love and Action table in the back. Lisa Nichols is also available at the table if you have any questions about the gifts or commitments you have already made. Remember June 6th at the Garden, right after the last service. On the other side of the lake. And there's maps in the back, and there should have been a map with your bulletin. So it's all there for you. All right? And the service, I believe, is going to be over there, too. Our informative, <laughs> all right. Our informative and spiritual, inspirational spiritual learning classes will be starting up again in June, on June 7th day after Sunday, and have been going on through July 2nd. Check them out in today's bulletin, your Center Point newsletter, and on our website, our great website. All right, I'd like to invite Mary and crew up, aka known as the Love Bucket. She is a love. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. I'm sure many of you know the words to the Beatles song, all you need is love. And Reverend David so eloquently reminds us every week, we are that love. And with that love, three years ago, we as a spiritual community committed to the Love in Action program to raise funds and fulfill our vision, to renovate and beautify our spiritual home at 1871 Gary Road. The love and the Love in Action program brought us even closer as a community. It inspired us to explore and discover our personal understanding of giving and receiving. <coughs> Along with fellow co-chairs Susan Miller, Ali True, and Don Shaw, 10 incredible green teams made up of volunteers donated countless hours to the success of the Love and Action Program. The Love and Action Program guided us to go into our hearts and discover our source of abundance and all that is good. And we know God is our source. We learn to live and laugh in the moment. We learn that anything is possible. We played, we prayed, and we grew spiritually, personally, and as a community. I know we have learned that love and action is not only a three-year program. It is ongoing. It is a vibrant, heartfelt energy and a way of life in which to love, to give, to be enriched, empowered, and be blessed by God's love. And for that, we are truly grateful. The vision is now a reality. We have a remodeled and renovated light-filled sanctuary with the addition of a stunning new cupola to match the one inside of the new. A brand new kitchen, <laughs> additional space for our children, and a new audio-visual area, and new offices. We know we are love and action, and we have given our time, our talent, and our financial support to fulfill the dream. And I look forward to continuing this journey with you as an expression of the source of God's love within us. Thank you. If you are here for the first time, I'm going to ask you to be brave. Would you please raise your hand and keep it up so we can acknowledge you? While people are walking around, we have a gift for you. 
And, on, and the gift is a shell lay, and on that lay is an affirmation that says, just as God has a design for every shell and seed, so God has a design for your life. We would like to send you our special blessing. Make sure we get everyone here. We do this by rubbing our hands together and affirming. Yay. All right. Together, we love you, we bless you, and we behold the Christ light shining through you. Welcome. All right, so let's take a moment to give each other a hug or a handshake. Yay. Yes, 
you now to just move into a space of deep relaxation, just allowing the chair to support your weight, just completely letting go, letting go to the light of God. Begin to move your attention down to your heart. We were just saying about shining the light from our hearts. So let's move our attention down to those beautiful hearts. And now breathe, just letting the breath Take us home to our hearts, letting the breath be our guide down this path of light. Just follow the light home. Just breathing into the light. Following the light home to our hearts. And now arriving there in our hearts, we begin to fill our hearts with that same light. Just sending those sparkles of light throughout our hearts, sprinkling that fairy dust of light right into our very heart. We are connecting with the heart of God. Filling our hearts with dazzling light, light like So that it radiates out, radiates out into the room, so that we begin to feel the warmth of it, as if the sun were shining, as if the sun were warming us. <coughs> We are warming the room with the light from our hearts. Join heart to heart now, like a golden sun, radiating our warmth, filling the room with this comforting light. Firing light. And now we just let go and rest in the light, being at one with it, heart, body, and soul, so that we are the light. We are the light. 
into its radiance. <coughs> and now as we bask ourselves in that warm light of love, I invite you to connect with the memory of when you were younger and spirit was there for you as the light. A moment in time where you felt loved and supported, lifted up, where you felt the joy and appreciation of knowing that God was there for you. I invite you to reconnect with the memory from when you were younger. knew you were a child of God. just invite you to take that memory into a feeling of deep appreciation. Just feel the joy of knowing who you are, knowing you are loved. And then I invite you to travel forward in time to a moment in your adult life when you knew spirit was there for you, when you felt that love, that connection, in such a real way, a moment when you felt the joy, the appreciation of being connected to God, I just invite you to connect with that memory now. Now I invite you to, to think back upon your week, to think of a moment when you knew that you were loved, a moment when you felt supported, when spirit came through for you, a moment of joy, a moment of appreciation. invite you to just be aware of this golden thread of love and support through your life. Spirit has always been there for you. That this divine love and wisdom has been there to lift you up so that you knew you were a child of God. that in this very moment you know that you are that divine love, that you are that wisdom, that this infinite intelligence is expressing in and through and as you right now. And so we are joined now as one heart, one heart, One presence, one power, one love. Feel the joy of that knowing. The bliss.
bliss of that connection. And we say, thank you. Thank you, living, loving spirit. For every blessed moment of our lives. For the joy of being God in expression. And so it is. This is celebration that means the most. Please join us this evening with yeah. God's prayer, which we begin with Mother Paul. So who is that being of light that led the meditation? I'd like to introduce to you Reverend Rita Marie Johnson of Costa Rica. She re returns here to Unity Center of Walnut Creek. She is a world peace leader, the founder of the Rasser Foundation and the creator of the Be Peace Process. Her exciting work has been a centerpiece of our learning to accomplish inner peace and bring a greater consciousness of peace to the world. She will be sharing her unfolding path to peace, peace with us today. Please welcome Reverend Rita Green. you to sing along in the words what you're gonna do about it. It goes like this. If you don't like what's going on, what you gonna do about it? That's your part. If you don't like what's going on, what you gonna do about it? If you don't like what's going on, what you gonna do about it? You got it? Schoolyard fights were bad enough between the black kids and white. But the last straw broke when her brother was sent to war. She cried so much, ain't right. Her teacher said, ain't nothing you can do, so hush and quit pouting. You can't change the world, you're just one girl. What you gonna do about it? Back home she threw her backpack down in a real bad funk. Mama said, don't let anyone fill your head with junk. Can't change things that funk. Gotta decide, will you walk the talk or give up like a coward? If you just complain, well nothing gets done, so what you gonna do about it? What you gonna do about it? Sit there on your hands, there ain't no change to come until someone takes a stand. Nothing ever got better, till people stood and shouted, 
So if you don't like what's going on, well, what you gonna do about it? If you don't like what's going on, what you gonna do about it? She went to college, got a teaching degree, made up her mind. Make a difference, teaching love, respect, and kindness, one child at a time. Taught them about prejudice and hate, so we can live without it. The future stands in your hands, so what you gonna do about it? What you gonna do about it? Sit there on your hands, there ain't no change to come until someone takes a stand. Nothing ever got better until people stood and shouted. So if you don't like what's going on, well, what you gonna do about it? If you don't like what's going on, well, what you gonna do about it? Now, 40 years later, one of her students signs a historic peace accord. World leaders thank him for his part. He says, I should thank the teacher who put this challenge in my heart. What you gonna do about it? Sit there on your hands There ain't no change coming Till someone takes a stand Nothing ever got better Till people stood and shouted So if you don't like what's going on well, What you gonna do about it? If you don't like what's going on well, What you gonna do about it? If you don't like what's going on Well, what you gonna do says go to Costa Rica. Well, you can do it right here at home. That's their next song. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. So wonderful to be back here at Walnut Creek, where I feel so at home. And actually, I'd like to begin by asking how many of you remember exactly what I said a year ago in my message. <laughs> well, that's all right. I'm going to refresh your memory. So actually, I am going to revisit that message just a bit because I'm going to evolve it. I'm going to actually tell you where we have come since that message. And I know we have newcomers here today, so I want to revisit that message just a bit. The name of that message was the Transcendence Equation. And you have a little handout. Did everybody get the handout? If you didn't, you can raise your hand, and they'll bring you a handout. Let's see. Oh, we've got quite a few. In that message, it's been a year ago, May. We still have a few hands up. about coherence, which is something that Reverend David talks to you about frequently, I know. And for those of you uh, who are new to this congregation today, coherence is when we have our heart and our brain in sync and everything is in an ordered pattern inside us. It is when we are in alignment uh, at the physiological level, and when we are in alignment that way, everything in us lines up so that we are at our very best. And this is science. This comes from the Institute of Heart Math right here in California. And I know Reverend David teaches this all the time, so most of you are familiar with it, and I won't go into the detail on it. But the bottom line of coherence is that it starts with a feeling of appreciation in our hearts. It starts with that feeling. And when you think about that, isn't that really what prayer is? Isn't prayer when we 
have a problem in our lives and then we turn our attention away from that problem to God. And is there any better way to connect with God than to feel God in our hearts? And how do we really get to that as human beings? Don't we start with a feeling of appreciation, the feeling of gratitude? And as we move into that feeling of appreciation and gratitude, we're into the heart of God. And as we move into the heart of God, then it's amazing how answers come, isn't it? Isn't it amazing how we get answered prayer when we turn away from the problem to the love of God in our hearts, and then suddenly answers come. And so when I spoke with you a year ago, I shared that I discovered a book called Anna, Grandmother of Jesus. And it's amazing, this is a Chan book, that Anna, Grandmother of Jesus, has a lot to say about coherence, this state that takes us into the heart of God. And she said this, she says, what I now offer you is a paradigm from which to view Jesus and your initiations. Now when we say initiations, we're really just meaning our challenges in life that cause us to grow. And so she's saying, from which to view Jesus and your initiations while being in the midst of chaotic planetary crucifixion and resurrection. Would you say we have a little crucifixion going on right now? I think we do, don't we? And so Anna's telling us how to deal with that. How do we face that? So she says this is a new model of coherence dynamics based on the science of quantum mechanics and chaos theory. Now this is Anna, grandmother of Jesus, talking about this science. So she says, in your day, there's research being done that indicates a person's well-being and actual state of health is enhanced when his or her mind, heart, and body are in harmonious relationship with one another, a coherent energy field. So Reverend David's teaching you this all the time, isn't he? And Anna, the grandmother, saying, right on. Okay, and so... Anna goes on to say this. She says, those involved in this research, like at the Institute of Heart Math right here in California, she says, these people have found that the most coherent field is subjectively called love and appreciation. When discordant, limiting, time-space perception shifts into quantum, holistic awareness, there is healing, or reestablished order, balance, and wholeness. Another way to look at this is to see crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension as those processes that return incoherence to coherence. So, it's right there on your handout the transcendence equation. That when we have some perception of an unmet need, that this is what Anna is calling incoherence, some sense of being a victim, some sense, some mini crucifixion, whether it's at the personal level or the planetary level. And in moving to this feeling of appreciation in our hearts, that then we become coherent or resurrected. And then we're able to hear these answers to prayer. We're able to receive these transcendent answers. This new intuition or new creative idea comes to us as a result of having gotten to that place of the love of God in our hearts. And that's when we ascend. That's when we grow. That's when we have our wisdom that then causes us to evolve. And so, friends, in learning this equation in my life, my faith has become certain. I am clear. I have much more confidence. 
because I have claimed this equation and practiced it over and over and over again. I remember the first time that I really got it. I was sitting on my sofa in my living room in Costa Rica, talking to the teacher of the little school that I had founded. And we were having a discussion about expanding the school. And as we were talking, I could see that Paula was getting stressed about the idea of expanding the number of children in the school. And there was starting to be this tension between us. Well, we had just had the director of the Institute of Heart Math come to Costa Rica and teach us how to get coherent. I had just learned this. So we said, well, let's try that. You know, rather than getting tense and, you know, having some kind of conflict, let's try what we just learned. And so we went into our hearts and we breathed through our hearts and we felt appreciation. And moments later, suddenly an idea came to me about how to grow in a way that wouldn't stress Paula. And so then I acted on that idea. I shared it with Paula, and she said, yeah, we can do that. And then we proceeded to grow our little school in that way. And that was my first experience where I really got how efficient prayer can be. Don't have to wait for years for answered prayer. Amen and hallelujah. <laughs> and so I got it. I thought, wow, this is a practice. I can do this. This is clear. I can do it. I can repeat it. I can practice it. And so, friends, that's what I've been doing all these years in Costa Rica. That, I've been there 17 years. I discovered that way of going into immediate prayer in 1998. And I've been practicing that way ever since. And as a result, now in my personal practice, it comes more instantaneously. I had a wonderful example of that this week, actually just two nights ago. Two nights ago, I had a vivid dream. And in that dream, I dreamed I owned an apartment complex and that I'd forgotten about it. <laughs> yes, I dreamed I had this asset, this incredible asset, and my God, I'd forgotten I had it. And when I woke up, it was so real. You know that kind of dream where you, you're kind of like in between the dream and reality? And when I woke up, God, I thought, you better think back now. <laughs> Did you buy an apartment complex? Did it? And, and so, you know, it was just buzzing in me, but... We had a busy morning. We went yesterday and did an all-day workshop at Unity of Berkeley. And Sandy was with me, driving me to Unity of Berkeley. We got in the car, got going, and I was telling her this dream. And she says, well, did you ask your heart about the meaning of the dream? Because she knows this is my habit, that I've had many dreams, and I ask my heart the meaning, and, and I get the clarity. And so I said, no, I haven't had a minute to even ask my heart. And even as I started to just turn my attention to the heart, boom, it popped. I got it. I didn't even have to go into my heart, breathe through my heart, appreciate just the intention. And knowing that's where I was going to find my answer, the answer popped out instantaneously. So you want to hear what it was? Yes. <laughs> well, I'm in a transition. I am in a transition of moving to the States eventually. I still have my home in Costa Rica. But I am now realizing I'm going to be living in the US and just traveling to Costa Rica. And so, one of the things that's been on my mind is where in the US am I going to settle? You know, what is this uh, all about? You know, where does spirit want me to land that I need to kind of figure it out and you know, have a base and get set up and, and all of that? So I've had this on my mind, you know, how am I going to do this? Where am I going to be? And what I got is that I have spent the first month here with Sam and Paula in Vermont doing bee peace. And they made me feel so at home. Had my bedroom there. 
then I moved to Jay and David. And they took such good care of me in Unity of Arlington. Had my bedroom there, everything I needed. Now, this month, I'm with Rick and Sandy. And I've got my bedroom. they got my office all set up for me there. Friends, I have an apartment complex. <laughs> it's an asset. And I really had not put it together. I'd like forgotten. This is already there for me. And this is the life I'm to lead right now. And what Spirit was saying is, look at this, you've got an apartment complex. And don't forget it. Realize what you've got right now, and it's what your life will be right now, and that you're going to be cared for. And don't put time and attention and money into some other plan you think you have to have. And so I won't. You see, I'll act on that guidance. I got it. Dream came. Heart said, this is what it is. Act on it. Don't put any more of my precious time and attention into that. I'm completely at ease now with the life I'm leading. And when it's time, I'll know it, and whatever next stage will come, will come. So thank you, God. Yeah. And so, friends, what has happened in developing my practice to this degree, knowing I can get instantaneous answers to prayer, is that I've been able then to actualize my potential. I've been able to shine my light all the way out in my life without fear because I know the answer is going to be right there for me. And so I'm able with confidence and clarity to shine my light all the way out all the way out. And so I'm, I'm curious how that is for you in your lives. Whether you're embracing this transcendence equation that Reverend David teaches you all the time, whether you're really embracing it, really practicing it, so that it frees you to shine your light all the way out and act on it. And then act on it. You see? Because, friends, it's paid off in such a huge way in my life to do that. That it is by listening to my heart and how I learned to do that in 1998 and how that led me every step of the way in my journey in Costa Rica. When I was here back in May of 2009, I shared with you that I had developed the practice of Be Peace. Be Peace includes this practice of coherence and that we were now teaching it in the public school system, that we were teaching it at the grassroots level so that teachers, students, and parents were learning be peace and practicing it in public schools. So you want to know what happened next? Well, after I went back that May, we were in dialogue with the Ministry of Justice. And in that dialogue, we suggested to the Ministry of Justice that wouldn't it be a good idea to form an alliance of nonprofit organizations for peace in Costa Rica so that everybody would get on the same page, so that all these nonprofits would know what each other are doing, and not only that, but that if the government was facilitating that alliance, that we would all be on the same page, the government and the nonprofits. We would have a way to come at the promotion and establishment, implementation of peace programs in a systematic way using our resources efficiently and effectively. So they said, okay, let's do it. And so the Reserve Foundation and the Ministry of Justice hosted the first meeting of nonprofit organizations for peace and we formed an alliance and now the government facilitates it and they meet regularly. So that was one dream that we've had on our plate for a while, it was on our, our organizational aims, our goals, our plan, and it was realized. And then in August of 2009, after working for three years on our Ministry for Peace bill, we'd initiated it back in 2006, and in 2009, it passed without opposition. Hey. <laughs> friends, think about it. Now we had a holistic national model of peace, no 
Costa Rica doesn't have an army, but we've been able to strengthen that model of peace by having peace from the inside out through the practice of be peace, peace from the bottom up by teaching at grassroots in the school system, peace from the top down through the ministry of peace, and peace all around with the nonprofit alliance for peace. So it's inside out, bottom up, top down, and all around. That's the model of peace. So the good news is that all came from right here, from my connection with God, being guided step by step and acting on it, acting on it, friends. We can't just stay in our own little world because guess what? Our planet needs every one of us to be actualizing our potential and shining our lights all the way out. We need everyone to have the clarity and confidence in their connection with God and their ability to listen and act on it. And if we were all doing that, wouldn't that be a shift? Yes. If we all had that clarity and confidence and acted on it, our world would change like that. And so, I'd like to invite you to just think about what is yours to do? What are you being called to do? You know, in Costa Rica, when I reached this summit, oh, I didn't tell you the end of the story, did I? Okay, end of the story is in September 2009, at the request of the Resor Foundation, Costa Rica hosted the summit of the Global Alliance of Ministries and Departments for Peace, where we had a gathering of over 200 people from 41 countries, all working on setting up ministries and departments for peace in their country. And so, we were able to share Costa Rica's model at that summit. We were able to say, peace is practical, possible, and replicable. Here's a model. You don't have to do it just this way, but it's doable. We can do this. We can do world peace, friends. We don't have to be in confusion. We don't have to think we don't know how. We do know how. We know how to listen to the wisdom in our hearts with clarity and confidence, and we know how to do peace. We have a national model now. It's replicable. And of course, in Costa Rica, we're working all the time to make it even more and more authentically peaceful. You know, it's not like every citizen yet knows how to practice peace. We've got a ways to go to get these peace teachers in every school. But we know how. Now it's just a matter of doing it. So at that summit, that summit was like the summit of my life in Costa Rica, being there 17 years. And it brought my work there to a certain kind of closure. Not that I'm not supporting that work or I'm not disconnecting from it in my heart, but now I'm being called to my Thank you for helping me to feel at home in my own country. You know, after being 17 years away, I'm a little culturally disadvantaged. Because sometimes you tell jokes and I go, what? <laughs> Didn't get it. You know, something that everybody knows and I don't know. Anyway, thank you for helping me feel welcome. And you know that I had an experience when I was 10, walking down my country road there in Missouri. I was waiting for it to get dark because it was the 4th of July. And I saw this beautiful sunset in front of me. And my heart just filled with appreciation. So guess what? I was coherent. I was in deep appreciation. And as I had that experience of my heart filling up with appreciation, I recognized that this was peace, that this incredible peace was possible. And in 
that moment, my heart said, and you will work for peace. And that's when I wish I'd gotten the lesson. <laughs> I had to learn it in 1998, all over again. But if I'd known what coherence was then, that it, in filling my heart with appreciation, I got life guidance, you see. And it happened on the 4th of July. <laughs> it happened on the 4th of July. So I know I'm in my right place in my next stage of growth. It took me 17 years to go away and now come back to be able to, to be on mission at this time in my life. And what I know is that every one of you has a mission too. Every one of you has a divine plan unfolding in your lives. And so what are you being called to do? Where are you in your stage of growth? And I'd like to just invite you to take a moment now to go down into your heart and ask and listen. Just to go down into your heart and feel appreciation for how spirit has been there for you. It's been there for you when you were younger right up to now. Just fill your heart with that awareness of how Spirit has loved you and supported you through it all. And then when you're ready, ask your heart what it has to say about what is yours to do. What are you called to do? To assist our planet resurrection. that we know what is ours to do. We know that we're guided every step of the way. So I invite you to open your eyes now. And whatever it is that came through in this moment, I invite you to claim it. To know it with certainty and to act on it. And that whenever you get that guidance coming through, to move it into action, what you going to do about it? Yeah. yeah what you going to do about it? And so friends, let's bring in this new paradigm of peace with clarity, with deep confidence, and with great
If you like prayer support for challenges or celebrations, our heart ministers will be available after the service in the balcony. In the balcony. In the balcony. <laughs> And um, you're also invited to place prayer requests in our prayer box located near the entry doors, and we will be praying with you throughout the week. It's time for our prosperity celebration. Please remember, if you're giving a love and action donation, you use the envelope smart love and action. I invite you to take your tithe or love offerings in your hand. Be aware that God is the source of all your good. And repeat our affirmation. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And we have one of some music. Stand for our prayer protection. All right. 